Good evening. Welcome to worship. This is the second weekend of Christmas. And as such, uh, with the fog setting in tonight, it was kind of rough getting in a little bit. You almost had to be searching for, you couldn't see the church off in the distance. You had to be searching for that exact turn off and, and really all the other obstacles that were out there on the roads. Uh, it was a tough drive in. And it's very fitting because tonight we're going to be talking about searching. In our Old Testament, or excuse me, in our gospel reading from Luke chapter 2, uh, we're going to see how Mary and Joseph were in a searching mindset. And so uh, the fog really is just helping us prepare for that same mindset as well as we track them searching and see how it applies to our life as well. So now that we're in the second week of Christmas, just a reminder that uh, if you ordered a poinsettia to help decorate the altar area this season, uh, one, we thank you, and two, after service, we invite you to come forward and pick your poinsettia to take home with you. Uh, of course, we invite you to uh, take whichever one you think looks best. Uh, don't be modest and think you have to pick the one that's uh, closest to death. Pick a nice one that can help beautify your house uh, in the coming days and weeks as well. Uh, also, a reminder, tomorrow is New Year's Eve, so tomorrow we'll have a 7 o'clock worship service uh, with communion as well. It'll be different than tonight's service, so we invite you to tune in or join us in person as well. Uh, and then also next week, uh, we begin our uh, midweek, uh, midweek Bible studies. Uh, the Tuesday night women's study will wait one more week, but with that said, uh, the Thursday morning breakfast study and the Thursday morning Life Light Bible study both begin next Thursday. Uh, that would be January 6th. And then lastly, uh, a week and a half from now, so it would be Sunday, January 9th, will be the next uh, monthly uh, meal that our uh, high school youth group is providing as part of their fundraising for the National Youth Gathering. Uh, we'll talk more about it uh, next week, but just to uh, put something to put on your calendar, there is a meal that they are providing for you uh, that would be next Sunday, January 9th, between 10 and 1 o'clock. With that said, as we are still in the Christmas season, we are going to be singing many of the great Christmas hymns tonight. Uh, some that are very familiar, some that might be a little less familiar, but still uh, we're singing and celebrating Christ has come in Christmas. So let us begin with our opening hymn tonight, hymn 386, Now Sing We Now Rejoice.
stand as we make our beginning. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all people. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. O giver of all good gifts, we come to you today acknowledging our foolishness and short-sightedness. As we live in this world, we succumb to the thinking of this world which does not always align with your thoughts. Amid the strains and stresses of life, we forget about your unfailing love for us and for all of our world. For the sake of Jesus, your Son, our Lord, forgive our sins and renew us by your love. Our God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, loves and dearly blesses us with every spiritual blessing. We have redemption through Jesus' blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, the called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority. I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Uh, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, you are the fountain and source of all wisdom. You made Solomon a wise king. Your son demonstrated this wisdom in the temple. Grant us your wisdom so that we may share it in our communities and throughout the world. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our scripture readings. Our scripture lessons tonight are projected on the screen before you with our first reading coming from the epistle of Ephesians, the first chapter, where Paul says this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. This is the word of the Lord. In honor of Jesus and his gospel, I invite you to stand for the reading of our gospel, which comes from Luke chapter 2 and will serve as the text for tonight's message. And the child, and Jesus, grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. 
Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? They did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our sermon hymn, hymn 383, A Great and Mighty Wonder.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. From Luke chapter 2, verse 44 and 45, we read again, but supposing Jesus to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. Here ends our text. A couple years ago, a study came out that showed an average employee will spend about 10 hours a week searching, seeking, trying to find something, some piece of information or, or some physical thing they are looking for. In other words, if you hire five people, four of them will give you productive work, and the fifth person, well, They're not going to really do much. They're just going to be searching and searching all week long. We spend a lot of times searching, whether it's uh, lost looking at that map, trying to figure out where we are going uh, because the GPS just keeps recalculating over and over. We're always searching. As kids, we play hide and seek frequently. And and then in those great summer months when it's warm outside in the evening, we go searching for snipes out in the woods. We're always searching, whether it be for that missing sock that we can't find in the back of the dryer or even the season we just are in now, searching for that perfect present to give to that person that needs it most. We spend a lot of time searching. And it's not just in our personal, everyday lives, but spiritually, we spend a lot of time searching as well, looking for that fulfillment, that contentment, that peace that surpasses understanding, even that peace that we hear the angels singing about at Jesus' birth. In our gospel text tonight, Mary and Joseph are searching. In fact, next Thursday, we'll hear about that searching again, as next Thursday is Epiphany in the Wise men, the Magi, were searching, following that star for whatever was under that star. Now, we know that to be Jesus, but this really is a season of searching, and not just for the perfect present, but searching in general. All the stories seem to point to it, and Luke 2 is no different. It's kind of a unique text, though, is we really don't know a lot about Jesus between his birth in Bethlehem and his arrival at age 30 and the beginning of his ministry at the Jordan River. And this is one of the few texts that tells us, at least gives us a glimpse of what his childhood, his really those first 30 years could have looked like. You know, the last few weeks we've considered his birth. Last Sunday we looked at his presentation in the temple with Simeon and Anna. Today we're looking at Jesus himself at the temple, 12 years old. And it's an important text for us tonight because Jesus is showing us how the Israelites should live. It's showing how he fulfilled all that they were supposed to do, and in particular, being in Jerusalem at the time of a festival, at the time of the Passover. Now, Jerusalem, during the feast of the Passover, uh, Jerusalem would just swell. Everyone would come traveling to the city. This was one of the three major festivals that all would travel into town for. And so they would caravan together into, from Nazareth to Jerusalem, from all their hometowns to Jerusalem. Friends and family, everyone would be together in this travel. And you can imagine they would all go in such a group because they're traveling for protection safety from robbers who are on the way, but also if everyone is coming to Jerusalem, you know, it's more fun to caravan and carpool together. At least you have someone to talk to in the travels and they're no different. So it also kind of makes sense that that we find this text tonight. Because I'll tell you, this text was always a little intriguing to me as a child. And not even as a child, It's always just intriguing to me in general. How how do Mary and Joseph lose Jesus for three days? If anything, to me, this seems like it should be a text about bad parenting and and ways not to be a parent. How do you not know where your child is? And yet, that's, that's not the point. Again, they're probably traveling in caravans. They're with friends and family, so they're likely assuming that Jesus is off running around with a cousin, a friend, a neighbor, whoever it is, in the midst of their travels. It makes sense that they left Jesus behind. They're traveling with everyone else. They assumed Jesus would be with them. 
And so then they get to their first camp for the night. They wait for Jesus to come back for dinner, to come back home, at least for that temporary home and travel, and he's not there. Back then, there was no Amber Alert that you could issue. There was no alarms that you could raise or people to call. And so Mary and Joseph, you can imagine how they hoofed it back to Jerusalem as quick as they could, searching for three days. Again, this text, though, is not about parenting styles. It's more so about Jesus and his desire to be with his father. Isn't that the theme of his ministry? And we can go through all different parts of Jesus' ministry and see how he needed that time with his father. How many times in his ministry did he step away, pull away, get away from everyone else in order to spend time in prayer and withdraw? And so his family searching for him for three days, imagine the, the fear, the concern, how many times they were talking to others. You know, they didn't have pictures they could post on the the, the telephone poles saying, have you seen or this missing child? They're still retracing every step and praying all the way along. Can you imagine their prayers? You know, Father, you, you gave me your son and I've lost him. <laughs> Help us find him. And yet that's the way it went for three days. Now we could jump off on that three days and and what it's like to wait with anticipation for the coming of Jesus in three days and Easter. But that's another story. We'll save that for another sermon when this text comes back around in three years. For now, let's look at Mary, though. We see how concerned she is. You know how she is. She takes everything to heart. She, she really personalizes everything. You remember the end of the Christmas Eve text? Luke 2, verse 19, Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. We see it in today's text as well, Luke 2, verse 51. His mother treasured up all these things in her heart. But Mary's concerned. You can almost feel it in her, can't you? As a kid, uh, one of the games we would always play is hide and seek. Uh, it's an easy game. Every kid plays this, don't they? I remember one time in particular, my sister and I and a, a friend were over and, and we were playing hide and seek and it was my turn to hide. And so I went into my parents' closet and hid underneath my dad's clothes that were hanging on the lower rack. It was the type of closet where he had the two uh, racks. And so I hid, hid underneath the bottom ones. And I could hear my friend and my sister there talking and searching everywhere, and they couldn't find me. And I don't know how long I laid there in the closet, but I remember hearing them at one point saying they give up and they quit. And I'm still laying there, and they stopped searching for me. They got tired of searching. And that's the way it often is, isn't it? We're, we search so long that, that we get tired and we start to stop, not because it's insignificant, but we get tired of searching because we get exhausted. We get bored by the search, disheartened, and we, we may often keep going, but it's not easy when you know you need something and you either can't find it or you can't even identify what it is you're searching for. Mary and Joseph knew what they were looking for. For three days, they're looking our search, though, takes more than three days. It's a lifetime that we'll search for. We search for that politician that will save our country, a top draft pick that will resurrect our team, a baby that we think will complete our family. Everyone is searching for some sort of savior in their life, someone that will make their life better, someone that will give them just that little bit more security. And until we look to Jesus and see that in him we find all that satisfies our longing, we're always going to be searching. In fact, our hiding may occur because we simply fear of what we may find. Kids, they'll cover their eyes and pretend they can't see you. They'll play that game, you can't see me. And yet we try to play that with God for fear of what we may discover if, if his truth is truth in our lives. But even God is still there. We may hide from him. We may grow tired of searching. He's still there. In our lives, we, we love to play that game, hide and seek, not just because it's a kid's game, but even as adults, we get into it, don't we? And yet Jesus knows your every need. He knows that ache that is down deep inside your heart. And we may assume we need just a little bit more of this or a little bit less of that. And we might be able to fix whatever seems wrong in our lives. And if we can just find that right solution, search for that right solution and acquire it, then we'll be better off. Again, unless that solution is Jesus himself, that search is going to continue forever. 
See, since the Garden of Eden, mankind has been searching. We have all been searching. Sin has caused that longing in our lives, that telling us that the, the present reality right now is just not right. This present is not completely full for us. And we can all agree that something is amiss in our lives, in our world, and we may disagree on the solution. We may all argue at what that solution is, but you talk to anyone, followers of Jesus and those who aren't, almost everyone will tell you something's not right. So Jesus comes, and he brings us the answer to our troubles, as he's the one who now starts the search. For three days, Mary and Joseph looked for Jesus, but in our lives, it's not us seeking Jesus. It's in fact him looking to us, finding us. And then when he seeks us, he looks for us in order to draw us back to the Father, where in him we find a fullness and a holiness. What did Jesus say when Mary and Joseph found him? Did you not know that I must be in my Father's house? Jesus knows the importance of being with the Father, of being in his presence. The Father gives good gifts. He sustains the weak. He fills us when we are empty. And in sin, in sin we've lost that connection to the gospel. In sin we've lost that connection to the way life is as God designed it for us. Remember back in the garden, God walked with Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. That was that perfect relationship, the way things were supposed to be. Sin destroys that intimacy, though, doesn't it? In sin, we become lost. So Jesus now starts searching. He is the one searching for us who are lost, the the lost sheep, the wandering people. Jesus comes looking for you. That's, That's the whole purpose of his coming, the Son of Man, Luke 19, verse 10. The Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And so our gospel for today is very fitting as the second Sunday of Christmas, even as we approach Epiphany, the day the, the Magi search and find Jesus to bring gifts. It's fitting as we find Mary and Joseph searching for Jesus, even as we all look for that star, that light, that, that place that we are longing for. Because throughout scriptures, we find people always searching. Job, remember him, Job searching for answers. Moses, uh, he and all the Israelites are searching for the promised land. Saul uh, is searching for Christians to persecute. Uh, Jacob is searching for a wife and finds Rachel. And even when he marries, Leah is still searching for Rachel. Samson, he's trying to chase down all the Philistines. Jesus, he's no different. He searches for you. Even more, Jesus searches for the Father's will and follows that will completely to the cross. Where there at the cross, he searches and finds your sins that are placed upon his shoulders. And in Jesus, on the cross, our searching finally ends as in him, at that moment, we are reconnected with the Father. And in his resurrection, we are assured that connection continues for eternity. So as we begin this new year, what are you searching for? What is your New Year's resolution that, you, that you're hoping to obtain? And I'm not saying it's bad to have New Year's resolutions. We should always seek to improve our lives and become better stewards of all that God has given to us in whatever aspect of your life could use improvement. But until you find Jesus, more so, until Jesus finds you, We're always going to be searching. We may search for salvation. We may find it or or seek it among the uh, the struggles, the desires, the addictions, even the fears that we have as we look for salvation from all of those. But Jesus comes and he sets you free and he searches for you and satisfies the desires of your heart. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds together with Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Before we move into the uh, thanks for the offering, I really should apologize for not giving a warning before putting the picture of the snake up there. I at least saw a few of you turn away at that moment, and I should know that by now. So I apologize uh, for that without giving you the warning beforehand. And with that said, uh, we do thank you for your tithes and offerings. As you give in the box in the narthex, as you give online at, a bit dot, or, excuse me, at stpaulnapoleon.org slash giving, however you give, we are grateful. Uh, Because through your offerings, uh, we as a congregation, both locally and throughout the U.S., 
continue to help people in the midst of their searching see that Christ has come for them. And so we thank you for your partnership and ministry, especially as demonstrated through your offerings. Let us now join together in our next hymn, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. stand as we join together in prayer. We pray, Heavenly Father, you sent your Son to seek and save the lost. And while we continually lose our way and become lost in our sin, you relentlessly search for us to restore us. So grant us rest from our searching and help us to see you and how you have come to us through the cross. For you, Lord Jesus, you continually withdrew to spend time in the temple with your Father as you did, you demonstrated what was most important in life, connecting with the giver and sustainer of all life. And so not only did you demonstrate the importance, but you made it possible for us. So we pray that you would continue to seek us and connect us to the Father, that we may fully receive your gifts to us, gifts of life and forgiveness. And so as we gather this evening, we pray for all who are ill or hospitalized. Comfort them, care for them, give them peace, uh, from the struggles that they face. As we especially pray this evening for Jim Fouts, Matt Von Sagren, Tom Tassler, Don Hergie, Carolyn Sonnenberg, Dennis Mosier, Lee Hetrick, Wendy Fight, Jane Heffel, John Glick, Mark Spies, Noah Buchenberg, Randy Radel, Bob and Evelyn Long, Julie Reese, Pam Nagel, Zach Bowers, Dick Henricks, Peggy Went, Carol Sonnenberg, Jake Wolford, Sheila, Peg Roush, Eric Roars, Sarah Dishong, Gwen Moss, May Byrne, Cheryl Doyle, Lena Smith McQueen, Taylor Dickinson, Nancy Dravis, Brooke Craig, Monica Nye, Cindy Berg, and Mylin Fom. We also pray for comfort for families who grieve, especially for the family of Norma May Eldridge, who is the mother to Brenda Zook, and to the family of Bonnie Amsbaugh, who is the mother to Chris Spicer. Bring to them the assurance of the resurrection, that in the midst of their grief, especially in this Christmas season, they may know that you, Christ, have come to them. We pray for our nation, that as we continue to search for resolution, for a removal of conflict in our midst, that you, Jesus, would be that answer. Care for, guide our leaders, and give to them wisdom. Likewise, use your church to be that outpost of hope in the world in which we live. We pray for our military men and women, that as they serve, that you would continue to care for their every need, especially as we pray for this evening, Lieutenant Tiffany Lurch, Sergeant First Class Joshua Bell, First Lieutenant Bryant Slade, First Lieutenant Stephen Lord, Petty Officer Camden Short, Major Brad, MMNCS Benjamin Etzler, Staff Sergeant Brendan Bosselman, 
Major John Campbell, MMN2 Jacob and Lena Lurch, Corporal Dakota Woods, Private First Class Derek Coors, Major Doug Benneke, Private First Class Zach Miller, Staff Sergeants Chris and Deborah Hoffman, Captain Richard Snyder, Specialist Tristan Friedhoff, Staff Sergeant Alex Zavakis, Sergeant Zarin Carr, First Lieutenant Leighton Chambers, Airman First Class Taylor Baker, Major Kyle, Captain Daniel Rudolph, Warrant Officer Jeremy Went, Specialist Paul Lepic, Technical Sergeant Benjamin Leese, Specialist Andrew Dean, Private Gage Dalton, Private Grace Hopkins, Specialist Grant Lugo, Airman Maxwell Phillips, and Airman First Class Landon Moore. And so bringing these prayers and all the others that are still upon our hearts, we pray everything in one voice as we join together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join together in our closing hymn, Joy to the World. <laughs>